This will be a quick review of the techniques or technics, I'm going to call it techniques, PV-4767T VCR. Ran across this recently and one thing I can tell you for sure, I had never seen a techniques VCR in my life. I've uh, had a lot of experience with techniques audio equipment over the years. But uh, one thing is for certain, Techniques is a Panasonic company, so there's probably a Panasonic VCR out there that looks exactly like this and acts identically. But in this case, hey, we're going to go stereophonic, we're going to go hi-fi, and uh, we're going to put the Techniques brand on this one. Uh, this one was uh, very inexpensive and found it at a thrift store. Very clean condition and didn't have to do anything to get it to work other than plug it in. So let's go over some of the features that it has. I didn't mention it, but in case you're wondering, I also found this VHS tape, Fingers of Fury. It apparently has something to do with those uh, tech deck things that came out not too uh, long ago or maybe some time ago. Uh, I wasn't into those, so I don't really remember them too well, but we'll also check out that tape and see what's on it. But uh, again, on the features, we have two really cool, big, huge VU meters going on here in the front with the hi-fi indicator right in the middle of it. We have a eject button here, which actually works. We have a VCR TV button here, power pause, stop, a slow forward advance button, which I'll show you, it's pretty cool. We have uh, a rewind and search and reverse button here. We have a play as well as a play times two, so you can play your video at twice the speed. A fast forward search button there, and of course a record button on that side. On the right side here, you'll notice a wonderfully blinking 12 o'clock right there, a clock that has not been set. We have a mono, stereo, and audio too, which was probably secondary audio program indicator right there. Also notice that the unit has the same font on it, lowercase with no capital letters, that was uh, used a lot on Techniques receivers and tape decks back in the day, most of their units actually and it has almost a, I don't know, almost a brownish gold type uh, tint to it, to the casing. So that would have matched a lot of the equipment that came out around that time period. Now this one dates back to 1987 and I'll show you that on the back once we show you the jack pack on the back. Notice it has four heads, it has quartz tuning and I've seen a lot of turntables, Techniques turntables that has that same quartz name on there almost like it's a copyrighted name of theirs, tuning, model numbers there, and of course the Techniques brand right there. Now this does open up to a myriad of different controls underneath the hood here. I won't go over all of them, but just show you some of the main ones. This is the mono button here, which toggles mono, and then you have main, secondary audio program one, and secondary audio program two. That was for over the air, stereo television when it first came on the scene. Very exciting time. You have a physical switch that switches between the line in on the back, the tuner built in, and the secondary audio channel there, audio to channel. Now, I'm not entirely sure what that is for, but I guess that's maybe if you wanted to do a simulcast type recording, so you could, you could record from the tuner the video signal and then sometimes they would have an FM radio broadcast of the stereo signal and you could put it in there. Uh, it has a uh, volume control here for headphones. It also has a headphone jack and it's weird because it says channel right here like it's pointing down to that but that's not what it's for. That's a headphone jack. And then uh, channel up, down, counter memory, counter reset, uh, one touch recording and of course a standby button there. The rest of this stuff over here is for setting the clock and uh, getting it to stop blinking 12 o'clock there. Uh, we do have a tracking control over on this side as well as a speed control right here and it has all three speeds SP, LP and SLP or as known as EP. Now let's look at the back. 
It's really interesting how VCRs changed with the television technology because you see here, this one has both UHF and VHF inputs here on the back, the coaxial VHF and then these two screw connectors for the UHF. So it, there was a time when you would have an antenna for each. So you would have a flat wire that would come in from the antenna and connect here. And then another flat wire that connected here It had two little prong type things, almost look like horseshoes on the ends. And you'd put those in and run those into the back of your TV. We have a channel three and four selector. So you can just play the VCR through channel three or four of your television's tuner, which of course is the worst quality that you can get. I am using the uh, composite video connector here with left and right audio. So we got video out as well as video in, and we have audio out and audio in. And then over here on the right side, the name plate indicates that it was made uh, 9-10 of 1997. And there's the serial number and of course PV4767T right there on the right. And it uses a whopping 27 watts of power. Now, because I am a genius, I went ahead and set the clock so it's not flashing 12 this entire video. And I'm gonna go ahead and insert a tape so you can see how this control panel here lights up. So it actually tells you here on the front what the function currently is, as well as the speed. VCR mode is on, there's the clock, tape counter, and your channel. And when you hit the different uh, functions, it actually tells you on the front, fast forward, such as that one there, and rewind, which is right there. All right, and then over here on the left side, moving the camera over, you'll see the hi-fi indicators there, well lit up. And if I hit play, I'm right at the beginning of this tape. Here, fast forward a little bit. And of course it wouldn't be a data bits video unless we pop the hood on this and let you see what's going on on the inside. And we'll do that shortly. But I just wanted to show you all the cool lights on the front. So there's our hi-fi signal indicator there on the front. Very, very cool. Gives you something to watch when you're bored with the movie that you're watching. You can just watch these little blinking lights. Very fun. All right, so now, as promised, let's go ahead and pop the hood and see what makes this thing tick on the inside. Should be fun. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present to you the inside of this Techniques VCR exposing all of its innard guts. There are two circuit boards you'll see there on the top that are actually keeping us from seeing everything on the inside. You can see there's a circuit board down in here. There's a circuit board on top covering what's going on completely down there. There's this other big circuit board here that in order for us to see all of the mechanics, we have to remove two screws. So there's one here and there's one here. And I'll go ahead and take those screws out. Now removing the lid from this thing, or the hood as I referred to it as earlier, there are four screws to remove. There's two on the back edge, and then there's two on the bottom. And there's actually more screws than that on the bottom, but look for the ones that have little arrows pointing to them, kind of like Sony likes to do. Just put little arrows in saying, hey, you know, only users, uh, what do they call it? Uh, qualified service personnel should be doing this, but uh, here's the arrows to tell you which which uh, screws to take out. So now that I've removed those two screws, I can just flip this little board over like that and everything is exposed. So here's what it's like to put the tape in, or at least what it looks like to put the tape in. Falls in there. Now, a lot of more modern VCRs will go ahead and load the tape up into the mechanism up here. This one does not. This one waits patiently for you to hit the play button. So let's go ahead and do that now and you'll see everything load up. And you can see the video cassette Fingers of Fury is now playing. And we can see that our little meters are jumping there on the front down here. 
This one does not have a funky capstan in it that uh, kind of swings around or does anything weird like that. This one just uh, is pretty well normal. There was an RCA VCR that I did a review of and uh, it has this pinch roller, not capstan, but pinch roller that swings from up from an upward position to a downward position and falls right into place there. So I'll show you what the fast forward and rewind look like. Kind of like the little reels on the inside of this Fingers of Fury thing, kind of classy looking. Kind of a noisy fast forward, isn't it? And we'll go ahead and go in reverse. And then when we hit play, it should fast forward just slightly to get past the leader, and it did. And it loads up and is ready to go. All right, so let's turn on the TV now and see what the picture quality is like. It's actually pretty good. So my question to you would be, if you were a tech deck collector back in the day, did you in fact have fingers of fury? Well, apparently you did. And apparently tech deck was these little skateboards that you would operate with just your fingers which indicates pure fury. A 4-1 video production. Darren Langhorst, Saskatoon, Canada. Damien Bernadette, Dijon, France. Tony Pethex, I should stop reading their names, I'm gonna destroy them. So yeah, apparently you could have this amazing dexterity uh, skateboarding with just your fingers because that's really the thing to do, you know? All right, so let's see, pause. Let's see what pause looks like. So there's pause. And you can see it kind of cleans itself up a little as it goes. Let's do forward advance. We have on-screen display. That was a big deal back in 1987. It's pretty commonplace now, but back then being able to see on the screen what the function was. So here's our play again. And then let's do play times two. And you get that by just hitting the play button a second time. It's got a little bit of lines going on there to do that. And let's do a little reverse search. Boy, it's fast. It ain't messing around. And then there's play again. And then fast forward, search. They could have at least played something that wasn't quite so repetitive all the way through this video. So there's our pause again. Now some VCRs have a little adjustment on the back. Some of them had it on the front and you could adjust the resolution or the, the clarity of your pause. This one doesn't have that, but all right, let's go ahead and hit play again. Okay. Mono, that button doesn't do anything. Okay, yeah, there's an audio out button on the front. That audio out toggles left audio, right audio, hi-fi, and then linear recordings as well. The linear soundtrack. Man, these guys are good. Do you realize how many injuries these guys probably had to go through to learn how to do this? This is crazy. How to do a nice one here in 360. Get that stuff. 
I don't know what the copyright date on this uh, video is. I'd have to look up when Tech Decks came out. Probably the 90s or early 2000s, maybe. But uh, this was before YouTube, guys. I mean, if you wanted to watch a, quote, YouTube video of a particular product, they would have to mail it to you in the mail and send it to you as a tape, just like this one. Pretty crazy. Now, I did mention earlier that I didn't have to do anything to actually get this thing running. I did clean the heads, which is, you know, very important. But, uh, you know, this must have been old, owned by a uh, an old couple or something that didn't watch it a whole lot because it really works just fine and uh, has a really smooth picture quality for its age. Works very well. But the sounds that it makes are very familiar to me. I don't know if they're familiar to you, but... Um, just the little noises that it makes for each function. So like uh, rewind has its own sound to it. And then of course playback has its own sound. Just the sound of all the little mechanical parts going into place and the, the spinning up the video head. It's all very interesting and sounds that we don't hear today because everything is solid state and doesn't have uh, tape or turning uh, gears, motors, and all that other stuff in it. But uh, hey, that's the cool part of the experience of playing a VHS tape is everything that goes along with it. But as you can see here, it's got a really smooth picture quality. Looks very nice. So guys, uh, that's about it for this video. I really appreciate your time and watching this with me and kind of going back to 1987 for uh, some VHS awesomeness. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Please share this video with a friend. Leave a comment below. Click that like button. See, there's all kinds of stuff for you guys to do. There's, I mean, you, you can't get bored here on YouTube. Uh, but again, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.